Everybody, what is up? It is Dunbar Snack Bar with MLB 14, the show. We got more out of the Athletics franchises. We're going to be facing the Los Angeles Angels. So they're obviously not doing as well as they are in real life. But obviously with the Angels, they've got a team that can really give you a hard time, especially when it comes to hitting. So I got to be on my A game. And I haven't played this game for a while, too. It's probably been a couple weeks. And it's actually really weird, like, going back after this amount of time and, like, playing this game because it, it's just so different than how I used to play it because it was just play the game, play the game, play the game. And now, like, you know, being away from it for a while, like, I can appreciate things like graphics, the crowd, just the sound, stuff like that so much more than I was able to before. So still loving this game. Now, I'm just afraid it's not going to be like, you know, riding a bike. After a long period of time, you know, not going to be able to just pick up and do it. So Trout getting the first hit of the game. This one goes into the gap in left center. Coco Crisp is going to run it down. And obviously with Trout's speed, he's going to have no problem stretching that into a double. Fortunate, though, it wasn't right center because then we would be looking at a triple. So here's Coco Crisp here in the bottom of the first, the very first pitch of the game for the Athletics. And there we go. Home run for Coco Crisp. Maybe it is like riding a bike. So really great to be able to see Coco Crisp continue to have some power as well. As far as outfielders go and actually just any position players uh, in the American League, Coco Crisp has really been a force to be reckoned with because I think that's like home run number 12 for him. And I think he's third overall with stolen bases. So I don't think I'll be able to do this like I did last year. But uh, I think... I think it was with Hayward where I got 50-50. So I don't know if I'll be able to duplicate anything like that again. So after the home run, Jed Lowry on the next at bat gets a single right past Ibar at short into center field. So 1-1 one, one count now to Josh Donaldson. Score still 1 to nothing, And a good hit into center field trout not able to get there so rounding third is lowry and he's safe really worried about how that throw to home was going to be just very lucky though that goes my way and we're already going to be seeing a little conference taking place on the mound very early on this is good for me because you see the confidence already starting to drop here's brandon moss with a full count jeez we are getting it done. Very solid hits. Another extra base hit for the Athletics and another run as Donaldson comes home. So now we're looking at a three to nothing ball game. Gosh, I'm liking this. Now, the trend might continue though, where I do really well in the first couple innings and then we get towards the later parts of the game and not so much. But Morales. Oh, that's over the wall. Two home runs here in the first inning. That is a two-run blast to make it five to nothing. I don't even know what I did. I mean, the timing, maybe being away from it a little bit, has kind of helped out here. But with uh, Richards, who I think I'm going up against pitching right now, he's got some velocity with the four-seamer. Well, just all of his fastballs, really. So... Like, on a pitch like that from Morales, I was actually kind of behind on it. So, full count now to Ioannis Cespedes. Goes into right field. And I'm kind of wondering what I should do about Cespedes. If I should go with the trade that the Boston or the Red Sox and the A's completed with Cespedes going to Boston for Lester and Johnny Gomes, I really would actually want to do that. Because I think that'll help me out a lot more. Ah, uh, Reddick hitting into a double play. Not good at all. But seriously, I mean, Cespedes really hasn't been doing that well for me at all. He's got like four home runs. He's hitting 250. So I can imagine Gomes is not going to do that much worse for me. And it allows me to be able to boost my starting rotation. I should also see if I should pick up Samarja too. Oh, man, Donaldson's throw really goes to show how that much foul territory can help or hinder you. 
So it's nice, though, if it's like a foul ball because I've got a lot of room to be able to go run it down and make the catch. But if we're looking at an error like that in a bad throw, well, runner at third comes home now off a good sack fly. You know, most other places that you would go, if you saw a throw like that, they'd be at second. You know, ball would have gone into the stands. But nope, not at ODOT Co. But I guess it could work out to my advantage at some point later on, too. There's Josh Reddick getting that one past Howie Kendrick. So another single for him. And with this, it's going to be the last draw for Sosha here as he's going to be coming out to the mound. And we're going to be seeing another pitcher coming in to relieve Richards there. So we're going to be seeing Joe Blanton come in. So Joe Blanton was a former Oakland Athletic. So kind of coming home here, I guess, a little bit. But anyway, with Blanton, though, I kind of know what to expect. So, yeah, Joe Blanton doesn't have the best velocity. So, you know, it means I can kind of wait a little bit and just kind of see what's coming my way. So Jaso with a good hit. Still a little early on that one as well. But, hey, that's okay. I mean, when you're going from somebody who pitches like 96, 97 miles an hour to somebody who throws 90, 91, you're going to have a few early swings of the bat like that, but it works out here for us. Now, Sogard comes up to the plate. I'm really wanting to avoid a double play. So I lay down the bunt. Well executed bunt. Blanton does not even make the throw to first. Bases are loaded on a successful bunt by Eric Sogard. It's nice to be able to see him back at, in the lineup since in the last game, didn't have him in. So Coco Crisp had the home run earlier. Maybe a grand slam for him with the 1-0 count. Nope, just a comebacker to Blanton. He starts a 1-2-3 double play. The worst double play. Man, not cool at all. I really should have stuck to what I like to do. You know, go ahead and just watch until the first strike. Because I could tell Blanton was going to throw it low. I mean, obviously he wanted to get a double play, but that was just a gem right there. All right, two outs now in the bottom of the fourth. Five to one is the score here. And Jed Lowry is going to line it right to Albert Pujols, who's going to make the catch. And now we're looking at the top of five. Freeze. First uh, time we've really been able to get a chance to see him. And I hesitated. So Reddick not able to make the catch. Coco Chris was going to have to run in from center to be able to make that catch or to pick that one up and get the throw into Sogard. Making sure Freeze doesn't advance past second. So that was just a free double for Freeze and the Los Angeles Angels. And this one, a well hit ball into right field at the track. Nobody really would have a problem getting on over to third from second. The throw from Reddick, nowhere close to being able to get Freeze out at third. So kind of dangerous here. Seems like both of the runs that we have seen, or what could be both runs, yep, here it is. Spoiler alert, I guess. So both of these runs have really come from mistakes um, by the Oakland Athletics, and that's not something that I, you know, I want to see or anybody wants to see. You know, you play fundamental baseball and you execute well, you're going to make sure that these types of runs that we've seen so far from the Angels just don't happen. But another hit, and this is really starting to wear down on Casimir here as with every hit obviously his confidence drops a little bit it was up pretty high for quite a while too Sogard not going to be able to get there rounding third and coming home nice safe man so Hester making it just playing smart right there Angels have been kind of aggressive on the base pass. And I'm not talking about stealing or anything like that, but just, you know, as they advance. Trout with the well hit ball on the left. Do not go over the wall, but this is not great either as Cespedes picks it up after it bounces. Trout's at second, and another run for the Angels comes home. So Casimir really in trouble now after four really good innings of play. 
Here we are in the fifth inning, and we're seeing a big two-out rally here for the Angels in the fifth. The game is tied at five. This one gets past Morales, out to Reddick in right. And obviously, Trout's not going to have a problem coming home. So just like that, the tide of this game has turned in favor of the Angels. So man on first, Pujols keeping it going. These, this is the type of hit that I really don't like seeing because it's like I know I threw it inside. I jammed him inside, but he's still able to get a hit. Like It happens so often in this game. It's just annoying. But anyway, here's Freeze again. And there we go. Come on, Sogard. Do not mess it up. And there we go. Finally get out of that inning. So bottom of six, we really haven't been able to get anything going here in the bottom of the fifth. Nothing for the Angels in the top of the six. But Reddick hustling, and he's safe at first. So having Reddick at first now is going to be huge for me because tying run is at first, winning run or the run to give us the lead here, the go-ahead run, is at the plate. Jaso with a good hit in the left center. Reddick's going to round third and come home. Jaso safe at second. And we're sitting pretty with a tie game now. So I really noticed in the bottom of the fifth just how hard I was trying to get back into this. Swinging at stuff I shouldn't, but now it's good to see it's all tied. Sogard, are you kidding me? This fly ball into center field, no one's going to be able to get to it over 400 feet. Trout just sitting there and watching it. That is home run number 10 for Eric Sogard this season. So just to kind of tell you what I'm thinking with Seth, Sogard now has twice as many home runs, actually more than twice as many home runs as Juanes Cespedes has. So the power that I'm supposed to be seeing out of Cespedes just really hasn't been there. Luckily, we've had players like Sogard, Moss, Donaldson, like really step up and help the team out quite a bit. So I'm doing something here that uh, is a little risky. I'm keeping Kazmir in despite the fact we had a terrible fifth inning with him. I've got a few players in the bullpen right now warming up, but I just figure you know what, let's let's keep him in. I just have a good feeling about keeping Kazmir in. Even though his energy has dropped, his confidence was really in the tank. But in the last couple innings, you know, he's forced the ball on the ground. And so we've seen a lot of ground balls, which has kind of brought up his confidence a little bit. I still want to keep Kazmir in uh, for a couple reasons. You know, left some big lefties in the Angels lineup, you know, we're going to be facing. Uh, plus, I kind of want to give my bullpen a little bit of a rest. And I'd like Kazmir to be able to get the win. He's like fifth or something overall in the American League when it comes to win. So he gets the strikeout there against Trout, which hasn't been easy to come by uh, at all. Two doubles, I believe it is, for Trout. So bottom of the seventh here, Josh Donaldson, who's had a pretty decent game. Just that error, though, kind of ruined things. And gosh, Josh Hamilton really showing off right there, diving in left field to go ahead and make that catch. And of course, you guys will get a chance to be able to see it again because I really do like getting to show awesome defensive plays like that. Okay, see if we can keep things going, build some more momentum going into the end of the game here. Maybe get some more runs. There's Moss. Now, I go back and I watch this and I kind of question whether or not I should have gone for second on that one because I'm not going to underestimate Mike Trout's ability to be able to get to balls that are hit into center field. It looks like he was playing deep already. So, you know what? After this, though, it just shows it didn't really matter. So, I guess the only good thing that would have been able to come out of it is if I had been safe at second, then I would have advanced on over to third and probably could have been able to get out. But anyway, here in the eighth inning, I bring out Kazmir. Um really for no other reason than Albert Pujols is coming up. And I didn't want to go with a lefty versus righty. So I am bringing in Jim Johnson. I mean, he is the designated closer for the athletics, but I don't like the 9.58 ERA. So I am continuing to go with the closer by committee, which whenever I've been pitching, 
has worked out pretty well. But here we go in the ninth inning. Gets out of the eighth inning just fine. Has no problem there whatsoever. And there we go without number one. Just a fly ball in the center field, which Coco Crisp has no problems getting underneath, making the catch. And here's Howie Kendrick, who, as you see, has gone 0 for 3 today. One of his at-bats ended up with a strikeout. So I haven't been able to pitch with Johnson that much uh, in this series because... I mean, I you know, either go with Doolittle or, um, you know, just anybody else, really, because Johnson's usually a lot more tired than most, and because of his ERA, you know, it's it's something I've kind of stayed away from. But the way that he's been pitching in this game, I've been pre been pretty proud of his performance, and I'm hoping we'll still be seeing a good performance here for a couple more outs and not allowing the Angels to bring any more runs home. So we're going to try that curveball again, which I haven't really been able to throw with a curveball all game. So I don't want to go ahead, though, and just sit there and keep throwing it over and over again. But Kendrick swings and misses on the two-seamer. That's his second strikeout today, and that puts us just one out closer to calling this game done and over with. And this one will be caught by Morales, and that is the ball game. So I was coasting for a while when it was 5-1. to one. Angels came back, had a big fifth inning, and luckily for me, in the seventh, well, I got some things going myself. Anyway, thanks for watching, or uh, sixth inning, excuse me. But anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. I sure do appreciate it. More Athletics franchise to come later on, so make sure you guys subscribe if you have not already. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that great jazz. But you guys are phenomenal people. You really are. Thanks again for watching. And as always, you guys, I hope you have a good one.